Okay. So we are going to start with our land acknowledgement, which at the moment is some words that we say, but we mean very deeply. Um, so let us proceed to our land acknowledgement. The New Mexico Alliance of Health Councils humbly recognizes and acknowledges that we are on the unceded territory and ancestral lands of the original peoples of New Mexico's Pueblos, the Apache Nations, and the Navajo Nation. Together, we acknowledge the history of genocide, dispossession, colonization, and ongoing systemic inequities, while strengthening and respecting our relationships with indigenous peoples. We give thanks for the past, present, and future stewards of this land, and we respect all tribal nations' sovereignty. In offering this land acknowledgement, we affirm indigenous resiliency, self-determination, and self-governance of New Mexico's tribes and nations who are still here today. So again, thank you all for joining us. And I would like to introduce now Alexis Brow from Dear Heart, Heart Consulting, who is going to share with you the work she's doing with the Alliance to turn that acknowledgement you just heard from action into word. And we are going to uh, provide this to all of you, offer the good works from Alexis. She's creating a, she'll let you know more about this, but she's creating not just a plan for us, but a toolkit for all of you who want to move your land acknowledgements from words to action. Alexis, I'm going to let you introduce yourself to the group okay. here and just proceed. You should be able to share your screen. Okay, and great. Again, could you all just introduce yourself in the chat and know that this meeting is being recorded and there'll be a chance to uh, uh, look at it. Those who can't join us can look at it later. Thank you. Alexis. Hi. So just a little background on me. I am a uh, citizen of the Choctaw Nation of Oklahoma, but I was born and raised in Santa Fe. Uh, I spent much of my youth in the Rio Grande Valley, like up and down through Chimayo, and then also in Western New Mexico in near Window Rock and stuff. So uh, a lot of experience uh, living and working in rural communities. Right now I'm in El Prado, which is just outside of Taos. Um, and I've had a 23 year career in nonprofit development and marketing. And then I switched to doing small business and nonprofit consulting. Um, so that's sort of the path that led me here. Um, this project has been sort of a culmination of all my favorite things <laughs> that I do in my work, which is a lot of research um, and then design and strategy and how to communicate the message in to the audience. Um, the approach that I took to this, this is sort of a new thing. So if you look for land acknowledgement guides online, there's a lot out there, but they're all pretty simple. They just give the basic concept of like what it should say or how it should say it, but they don't give any um, real advice on like what it means or how to go through the process of determining what you want to say. Um, every land acknowledgement is different. Um, so I tried to create a tool that would help create a process for you to do reflection and discussion and sharing ideas and provide tools to learn more about your particular areas and counties as well as across the state the tribes that live there now or who lived there before and actually give you the tools you need to go through the process of creating your land acknowledgement. Um, and then also how it will apply to the work that you've been doing with um, capacity building and sort of that the directive of how to do bring equity into your work and to really have effective programming to improve health outcomes. Um, so that's sort of the arc of how it all came together. So the there's a land acknowledgement guide, which is a printed document that gives sort of uh, the philosophy or the idea behind each component um, and then some resources. And then the toolkit is an online tool that's not 
quite done yet, but it will course, each section will kind of, will correspond um, and it will either have direct resources and tools you can use or questions to help kind of guide your discussion or kind of direct, you know, give you ideas on things to consider or what to talk about, decisions you need to make as an organization, that sort of thing. So, um, is there, are there any questions so far about it? <laughs> They do. <laughs> I'm looking in the chat. Um, so I'll go ahead. Should I just go through the PDF and show you kind of what's been going on? Okay. Alexis, uh, yeah. Diana, good, raised her hand. Oh, okay. Sorry. There's so many little things to look at. I'm slow on the draw. It's okay. So my initial hearing of what you're saying is that this toolkit would be available and you are almost saying it's okay for it to be an unfacilitated process. I tried to do because I know that everyone's uh, resources are different um, and funding changes constantly. So I tried to do it so it could be self facilitated. Um, it would be better to have someone help with be more objective and kind of guide the process so people don't have to worry about timing and keeping things on track. But it is, it could even be done in a chat, you know, like you could do it in a group or, um, because it's all it's primarily about personal self-reflection and examining the ways in which your organization or the partnerships that have been formed, how these things have what the work that they've done, even how they've contributed to perpetuating um, discriminatory practices, or it's a lot of personal reflection and then sharing. So it can be done in a lot of different formats, but depending on capacity. Thank you, that answers the question. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. So I'll go ahead and share the screen with the document and then just sort of give an overview. Okay. So one, just stylistically, um, I wanted the design of everything to really reflect the actual land of New Mexico. It's so beautiful here. So throughout the entire document and the website, I use images of New Mexico from, try to represent as many corners of the state as possible because um, we're so lucky to live in such a beautiful area. Um, so that's, you'll see that, um, let's see, there we go. So I start with a letter of kind of breaking down what the process was about and how it relates to your work. Um, and really this, you know, the councils are really, they're sort of merging these ideals of strengthening relationships between state and tribal uh, governments, but also finding effective solutions to improving health outcomes. And so this tool is meant to support both of those efforts. The ultimate goal is really to improve the health and wellness of all members of our communities. Um, so this, and that's what this is for, it's to support those efforts. Um, the First section talks about the process, like what it means for your group. And this can also be a tool, once you go through the process, it may be something that you wanna share with agencies that you partner with. Um, it might be a valuable tool for, you know, the nonprofit organizations or whoever it is that you work with so that there's a common language and understanding. Um, and it's about, you know, this is really about changing the culture of how we operate and the frames of reference that we use when, you know, creating the health assessments or doing policy proposal changes, you know, anything, all of the work that we do, creating initiatives, forming new partnerships should be done with this mindset of understanding the history and the complexity of that history and its impact on our communities today. And with the sense of optimism moving forward that we it's um it's a difficult process when you examine this 
history, um, but we have to hold on to some, a sense of we're all here with the best intentions and we're trying to find a way to move forward together. Um, so that's the attitude of this, so, um, the process. Um, I the, the goals for the land acknowledgement would be that building trust between state and tribal nations and community partners, identifying problems and solutions through ongoing meaningful engagement and mutually beneficial collaborations, recognizing the complexity of historical truths and addressing the false narratives and unconscious biases that with confidence and compassion, understanding that we're all coming from a different space and understanding of where we're at. Um, and it should be, you know, it should reference the people both past and present um, when engaging in capacity building and community assessments, health initiatives. And it's to help foster safe and inclusive equitable, equitable spaces as a key step to building a culture of health. Um, the, it is a commitment, a personal commitment as well as a group commitment um, because it's gonna take work to, you know, your own ref reflections, your group coming to consensus on ideas um, and even uh, research and study into the past and uh, the significant events that uh, shaped the, your community. Um, everything will, the common um, complaint about land acknowledgements has been that they become performative and sort of displays that really lack meaning um, or they become marketing ploys like to announce to their community, oh, look how great I am. Uh, so the writing of a land acknowledgement needs to be kept within the context of the historical truth. Um, and I wrote that as um, tried to keep it neutral, but also honest. Um, the Spanish, British, French, and Dutch profited from the land and resources that they stole from the people who are indigenous to the Americas. And they did this by murdering tens of millions of people, as well as causing their ongoing displacement, imprisonment, enslavement, forced religious conversion, abduction, and sterilization, as well as attempts to destroy their culture. The United States was able to become a world power because of the stolen resources and in order to maintain their position, they continued to steal land and build systems that helped perpetuate the subjugation and oppression of people of color. Now representatives from all three forms of government in the United States, federal, state, and tribal, are working to help commu communities recover and rebuild systems so as to prevent further harm. Lisa, chat. Oh, sorry, looking in the chat. Um, are there any questions about that? I, mean, I would love feedback on all of these different components. So when you get a time to read over it, that in particular. Um, then there's the steps of the actual process of what it means for self-learning and group dialogue. And then the steps of how do you actually write a land acknowledgement? So I go into, you know, reflecting on the actual words that are chosen. Um, and I give an example here, I give different examples on the toolkit. Um, to, it's about, you know, looking at this language outside of your own use and perspective and trying, placing it in that context that I just read. Um, things might be different when looked at from that context. So the example I give is stewards of the land. It's a really common phrase in land acknowledgements. And um, you may choose to keep it, but I give an alternate perspective on what that phrase means and the unspoken implications of calling uh, Native Americans stewards of the land um, because it implies it's their responsibility to take care of things um, and it discounts that the land was taken and the true steward of the land is the American government who has a trust responsibility to the tribes to take care of the land. So, and that's just an example It me, um, but all these different words that we use have a lot of meaning beyond our own perception. Um, okay. 
please stop me at any point if you have questions. Um, the next phase of the process is deciding the purpose, your purpose, your organization's purpose, your council's purpose. Um, here I talked about the history of land acknowledgements, how they've worked, how they've failed, um, and then how you might decide really what it means for you and your council. Um, then the next part is about the people, um, past and present. Um, talk about at least the current federally recognized tribes, but the toolkit's also going to share information on tribes that were displaced, uh, disbanded or destroyed because they're a part of our history as well. So say you're from a, a health council or county council that doesn't have representative a tribe represented in your county, there are still tribes for you to learn about because of their historical presence in your county, if that makes sense. So it's, we have the, the federal designations, but this process is really about the people and not boundaries. It's about who has lived here and the events that have happened and how that has shaped the world that we live in today. So um, things will be presented in terms of the boundaries that, we're, that we know, but I want you to look at things outside of those boundaries and, um, and outside of boundaries and time even, looking at any range of experience, like 300 years of colonization. Um, so uh, the next section is the past. What about the past that we need to look at? New Mexico has a very unique and lengthy um, history of colonization. And so there's a lot to look at. Um, I will, the website toolkit will have a timeline of key events. Um, those events are both specific to New Mexico, but also other events that affected tribes on a national level, just because of the, uh, being uh, really significant and having impact on all of us. I also have kind of frames of reference uh, with like, you know, Civil War, all these other historical dates, just to kind of put everything, um, set it in a, in that context and, um, so that each point on the timeline will offer information about that event. Um, and it goes from pre-colonization all the way to today. And it's segmented in terms of the, this, these groupings of um, sort of defining the relationship between um, the tribes and the, the US government. So the, you know, the start of colonization and then the, the transition into assimilation or annihilation and then the self-determination, these kind of transitions in relationship just to kind of show the arc of how things have gone over the years. Um, and I'm happy there's, I mean, it's 300 years or more of, so that there's a lot that I couldn't include. There are events you think are really important to include. I would love for you to share that information with me. I'm happy to add it. I am trying to have at least one historical event that directly relates to the tribes of New Mexico. Um, so there's that personal, their story is reflected on the timeline. Um, the next phase is looking at the present. What are the ramifications of that history? How is it currently affecting our communities? Um, the guide shares statistics that under each of the um, social determinants of health. I just took samplings of different ones because um, that starts to see how are these different social determinants really impacting our personal communities. Um, and of course, there's all kinds of statistics. This is just to kind of set the frame for like those social determinants. And then the online toolkit has actual resources that we can use in our partnerships or to create initiatives to help the different communities that we represent. <laughs> so it you know, there's information about historical trauma, the research being done in epigenetics and the 
uh, kind of the genetic tr changes that can happen through historical trauma, and then tools for creating effective partnerships and programs to work with native communities. So um, looking at, um, I, I only, you know, there's a lot. So I, I shared a couple, it's just, all of this is supposed to just sort of set you on a path in finding the right tools for your council. Um. Uh, <laughs> Alexis, can I just interrupt your, um, yeah. Al, Alvira asks if we can go back to the access slide. Do we know which slide we're, uh, you're oh, that'd be uh, me. My name is Alexis too. Oh, Alexis, oh, hi. another yeah. Alexis, okay. Yeah. So which slide are we going, where am I going? Oh, this one here, healthcare access. Oh, this one? I think so there's past, present. Uh, is this, oh, this Yeah, the oh, social so the, determinants. The, it's the sex of social determinants. Yeah. I just wanted to so for health and health and healthcare access, I chose a statistic of just life expectancy because I thought that was a it's just a good visual representative. There's a lot of different statistics that can be included, but that one I think shows um, the disparity that happens um, the, between different races. Um, and then the education I should these are and these are specific to. Um, so some of them I didn't have specific data for New Mexico, but um, I include where the data came from. So the life expectancy came from the CDC, um, whereas the education access and quality data came from uh, the New Mexico governor's report on tribal education status. Um, so they each tried to get as much local data as possible. It's not always um, easy to do or it wasn't current. Any is there any questions about this information? Um, so the, the next page is also just the other de social determinants um, for neighborhoods and built environments. I talked about homelessness. This was a, uh, a report that was done this year. So it was very current and relevant. Um, the water issue is a really big one. Um, and then the internet, because so that will go into the, the next the next phase is really how to use that information to create um, effective programming. Um, so if we're ready, I can, um, I'll move forward with that. So um, the next section is possibility. So that's, I went with alliteration on this. So this is the future, um, what it means for your community moving forward. And that's how do we use this to our advantage? How do we, use the knowledge of the past and an understanding of the impacts on the current lives of people in New Mexico so that we can find effective tools to improve health outcomes. Um, so there's, there's, these are ideas for how to, there's the kind of standard ways that have, that land acknowledgements have been used, just putting on your website, putting them in your email signature, saying at events, but this is more about the next, the, the blue column, um, how to use it to enact, to create change. So this is, it becomes a framework um, for how you report on data, how you see policies that might need to be changed, how you form new partnerships that could be formed. Um, and because health, the health, the social determinants of health really is across all sectors, you're in this position that, you know, housing policy is a health policy, educational policy is a health policy, anti-violence is a health policy. These are all, everything in our community connects to the health and wellness of our communities. So thinking of it from that perspective might open up new ideas on who you can work with to create programs. Um, the next page gives an example of what that could look like. This is, these are all very, sort of, I made them up, this is, I didn't have a group to work with, but, <laughs> but looking at a, a barrier to health and the social determinant that it falls under, who, what agencies or for-profit um, businesses or um, nonprofit organizations who could be connected to that barrier or social determinant. And then that might allow for creating ideas 
on how to improve that outcome. <clears throat> um, and it, you know, looking at the statistic about lack of access to internet, that's a very significant problem. If you increase access to, you know, if more homes have access to strong in internet, they can have telehealth or you could, um, you know, there's all these different things that can come from that, which it's not directly a health issue. Internet's not a health issue, but it is in terms of how it can improve the health of your community if you increase access. Um, so these are just examples on how your group could use the data the, and the land acknowledgement guide to create solutions. And then the last part is the literal step-by-step, -step how, what is the, what needs to be included in your written statement? And then the toolkit actually goes through a process of how to decide what language to use, who you want to acknowledge, um, why knowing your motivation and understanding why you're acknowledging that group, and then what your commitment is to that community. Um, and that's kind of the overview of, I include uh, my land acknowledgement and the Alliance's acknowledgement at the end. So I'm gonna check the chat. <laughs> Thank you so much, Alexis, yeah. Val here. And I just wanted to let you know that I've been capturing some of the input that folks Perfect. have Thank made. You. Yeah, and then I have that in an email so that we can follow up you and I. Perfect. And, um, yes. <laughs> yeah, just all of this information came from personal experience, but also research and you can't really trust the internet. So I really, I will be relying on all of you to help me make sure that the information is accurate. We want to be tr as truthful as possible. Um, so I need you to help me do that. You know your community, so I need your help. And Alexis, is yeah. there an opportunity to have a visual um, of the amazing <laughs> um, actionable toolkit, the, 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 the whole yeah. framework that you produce for the website? Just, to give our friends here, um, our partners here in health councils, uh, sort of a you yeah. know a preview of of how accessible this is going to be via the website. Yeah, so I can show. I'm in the process of. I had built it on one platform. I'm transferring it to the platform that's used by the alliance, so that we can then just put it quick and easy on their website. So it doesn't look quite as good as it did before. But let me pull it up. It'll get there. <laughs> um, Well, Alexis, while you're doing that, it'll get there is great news because that means that this is not written in stone. This is going to be a living, a living oh, yeah. enterprise, is it not? Yes, yes. And hopefully it's something that can be, it's not just restricted to the health councils. If you go through the process and you like it, it will be something that can be easily shared with others in your community. We want as many people as possible to go through this process of reflection and and. Um, understandings so that we can have more partners in improving health outcomes. Um, sorry, I'm not used to this platform as much. So <laughs> once I pull it up, I will let you know. While you're doing that, Alexis, I just want to point out that you've got some real kudos here in the chat that you'll want to oh, read. Oh, yay. Thank you. Diana's overwhelmed by how well this is done. So were we, Diana, when Alexis first presented to us. And we have needed this for so long. And Holly, uh, Holly also says, this is amazing, Alexis. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I really, when I did my, was doing my first research, it was, there were so many holes. Like everyone was demanding that communities do this work but there were no real resources on how to do that work. So that's what this is, is trying to create um, reliable and um, honest processes and language and, and resources for people. But ultimately the work is still gonna be the responsibility of the people writing their own land acknowledgement. Okay, I'll share the screen. Okay. <clears throat> so, the imagery is going to match, so it's easy to follow along with the guide or know where you're going. Um, it's the homepage is sort of a, a, 
a brief version of what the initial introduction was. Primarily, I, there's a lot of duplicate information so that if people kind of stumble upon the toolkit, they have some background into it. Um, the PDF will be available on the site as a download so that it's there as a, a constant resource. Um, and then the next part is um, including, uh, includes sort of your group commitments. These can be changed for your specific council or whoever's working on this, but this is selection of ideas on commitments that the group will make together um, on how to collaborate and it includes affirmations. Um, the next part is um, working in honesty, um, doing that research, asking questions. Um, the next part is uh, respect. And that's everything from active listening to showing up and uh, being on time and also being kind and rep re remembering that we all have our own experience in, with colonization and this can be a very difficult process. And I know that because I've had my own moments where it's been very difficult just in creating this toolkit. It's really hard to confront the darkness of our history and face these really destructive things that have happened. And especially if it's something directly relating to your own community, it can be really emotionally difficult. So having respect and care for everyone in your group and knowing that they may be going through something at some point in the process. <laughs> um, after that is optimism. So this is one of, it's hard when you're looking at the past, how to stay optimistic. Um, so it's just always remember that everyone is here at the table with good intentions and that we have to believe it is possible for people of different backgrounds and different ideologies and philosophies on life that we can find a way to work together and that those processes are in, they're happening. People are shifting how they look at the world and making strides to build healthier communities with stronger partnerships. So it's like always hold on to that piece of optimism. Um, then, after that, it just follows the tool, the guide, goes into the process. Um, <clears throat> um, so here, it I include sort of guiding questions, points, to, things to talk about, things to consider, um, and another, you know examining language, right? this one's actually an activity, like read this, this is an actual uh, land acknowledgement you shared at Princeton in their, um, their equity department. And I found, pers per I found some kind of issues with the language that they chose. So I kind of put that on the group to examine the language, what might be problematic. Can you find the words that are <laughs> kind of an issue? Um, so that you, that it's a real world, world example of how pers your pers perspective is not necessarily the one that should be, we need to look at things from different perspectives to find the most honest telling of our land acknowledgement. Um, and then the purpose. So this is, the purpose is gonna be, this, there's a lot of discussion in this section. Um, really knowing what your motivations are. Is it just because we're, you know, to check it off a list of things you have to do or, um, sorry, it's slow because it's not a live site yet. I can try it from, let me go somewhere else. Sorry. Um, but it'll, the, it'll ha it has questions on um, what to consider, you know, what, what are you acknowledging like what you can gain from this process? Um, how it can be used. Um, I give here, the first section is I give examples to include a pretty funny clip from the show Reservation Dogs. And it's of a girl who's giving the, her land acknowledgement to a group of kids. Um, and <laughs> it's, it's very funny. 
but remembering that it might need to change your land. You might have to have different versions of your land acknowledgement based on use because um, it has to be authentic to you and your group and what your motivations are, but it also has to be relevant to who you're speaking to. <coughs> um, there's a couple sample land acknowledgements that you were each presented in very different ways and for different purposes. And then, so you can kind of look at those and talk about how well, how effective they are, or it might give you insight on how you want to present your land acknowledgement. Um, then here's like questions talking about why you're doing it, um, how it's gonna help your health council, um, how, you know, there's going to be questions on what, you know, the difference in approach for a tribal health council versus a county health council um, and how, you know, a lot of how it's how the wording is going to be different or what the purpose is, um, how it can be changed. You know, you could have different, some people have visual representations of their um, land acknowledgement. So that's the next, who, who is it for? Sorry, the next section is who. Um, are you gonna acknowledge the people of the past? Um, are they gonna acknowledge the current community that you have um, specifically knowing the, their preferred name and the spelling and pronunciation? Anything I provide, I had found on my own. It'll be the responsibility of your group to actually find information from your community that they prefer happy to update the site, but that's a level that that's about building relationships, right? Having that opportunity to take something to a tribe that you can ask them, such as, you know, what is your preferred spelling? All of that. Um, then um, it's also important to recognize that this, this whole process is not something that is restricted to Native Americans. We all have diverse communities. So thinking about the ways that this work can be applied to you know, descendants of colonizers and um, the different races that we have or how things might be different for people who are in your community but are maybe enrolled in a tribe outside of the state, um, how blood quantum might impact policy or understanding of issues that can arise between communities. Um, there's a lot of, this is where a lot of reflection comes on thinking about what are the obstacles that you might face and being prepared for that. Um, and then here's, we're back to the, how you can use it, thinking about, do you wanna have it on your website? Are you gonna present it at events? Are you gonna include it in your health assessments? That kind of thing. Just so you don't have to decide all at once, but just having an idea on what you want to do and kind of building consensus around that idea. Um, then this is where I have sort of my most recent updates. So the people page is going to be, I talk about the language. Um, personally, I think language is important, um, both in terms of the language we use to write our land acknowledgement, but also looking at language as it can show connections between the communities and might give insight into you can learn a lot about the different tribes of New Mexico by looking at their languages and the relationship of their languages, even if you don't know the language. Um, so, you know, people might not understand that, you know, the relationship of different tribes can be seen in that. So I share that. And it's also reflective of their culture. Language and culture are intertwined. Um, some people don't even realize that there's, every tribe has their own language. Um, so it's seeing the individuality of each community through these relationships of language. Um, but then I go into specific information about the tribes. Um, this part hasn't been done, but it, I did research on each tribe in terms of their current population or pre-colonization, pre-contact population or current land size and pre-contact land territory. Um, I include uh, things that I found interesting about their communities, their culture, their art, um, maybe people of significance if they have people, you know, 
from their community that have done really cool things. Um, or, and then I'll tr have some information about moments in history that impacted their communities or caused their displacement or caused, um, you know, dramatic change in population, any of those things. So, but it's all snapshots. It's all brief information to sort of set you on a path of learning. And then the same sort of information will be available as I can find it for these displaced communities. Um, there's tribes that used to be here. So like thinking like the Ute, I'll have some for the Ute tribes in Southern Colorado because they had a presence in New Mexico or, you know, as, and there's a lot. And then there's the ones that, you know, have something about Pecos because that's a very specific tribe that I can pull information on that isn't, you know, and their relationship and how they joined Jemez, that kind of thing. Um, and I may even be able to have a list of tribes that kind of were long before even the first contact because they're also a presence here. They're a part of our history. Um, so the rest of the site isn't quite done yet, but you can see that it's, they're tools, actionable tools that you can do your research or questions to guide discussion. Thank you, Alexis. Mm -hmm. um, and we're very excited, grateful for this work, grateful to Presbyterian for making this work possible, grateful for Alexis's expertise and dedication and commitment to this very important um, and critical body of work. Uh, so we're very much looking forward to bringing this, um, you know, up in uh, alive in our NMHC website and, and have more opportunities like this to uh, continue to share this, this um, important actionable land acknowledgement. So th thank you so much, Alexis, and opening it up to other folks to see if there are any reflections, input, feedback, comments, questions. And this is an opportunity too to capture those so that it can inform the land acknowledgement uh, 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 toolkit that Alexis has curated for all of us. So I'll pause there. Back to you, Alexis, and anyone else. Yeah, I just, I mean, this was a, I was so excited when this came up as an opportunity just because of my own personal relationship to New Mexico. I've lived here my whole life. This is and will always be my home. And the land is such a important part of that. It's just, it become the land is really a part of all of us and the history that it holds it's such a it's almost indescribable that experience and that relationship and the process also allowed me to sort of really think beyond my own perceptions and uh, address my own biases and um, the ideas that I've formed from living here and perceptions on different communities and try and separate myself from those and thinking about even my own community's relationship to colonization and um, how they responded to it. Um, recognizing that each community has had a very different relationship with colonization. And so our, the impact of colonization is different for every community and trying to recognize that, that no matter what, whatever tribe you're from, it's not gonna be the same as, the, as someone else's community. So, what does that mean? How does it, what does it mean for us? So it's been a really amazing experience just going through this process for my own self. And I hope that everyone can have that same experience. Are there any questions? I'll try and see if I can catch up in, in the chat. Uh, Val, do we have a Val and Alexis? Do we have a timeline for um, when this material uh, will be accessible? Yeah, I think so. The next step is having impact in, our input on the the guide, which is the PDF. Um, if there's information you think should be adjusted, or language, or uh, if you'd like to see something very specific included, I'd love to hear everyone's feedback on that. Um, so it's re reflective of the councils and, and everything. And then 
I'm this the site's been designed. I'm just in this transfer process, so it hasn't. It's not taking too long. Hopefully, early next week you'll have the draft of it, and then I'll help. I can help facilitate getting it put on your site. We do have a timeline because I'm using a trial for, for this platform, so we have a week <laughs> to get it finished and transferred. And so we'll keep everyone informed about those uh, as, as things become available. Yeah. Can like we see that Diana and yep. Mallory again. So my question is about um, further deployment, um, meaning I, I know about the website and the PDF. Um, will there be more opportunities kind of like this that people can be exposed to Alexis's process and and I think I think her presentation is so powerful that um, I, I wouldn't want to not have that some more. <laughs> I don't know how to ask that. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Diana. Great point. Um, we'll definitely be looking for uh, ways that we can have Alexis interface with us in spaces like this, future health talks, also our capacity uh tr tr uh capacity building training opportunities calendar that's another space um and together we can you know come up with other ideas and then see how we can make that a reality to have alexis uh present at, at a future engagement so absolutely this is the beginning of our relationship alexis yeah. knows this <laughs> um and another part that i didn't say is um i'm gonna try and have sort of an introductory letter a cover page from me to each of the health councils so that it, it's kind of maybe includes some information specific to their community. Um, even if it's just, here's who I am. And just so you know, here are the counties you might wanna look at or the tri specific tribes that you will want to look at um, to kind of narrow it down for people, especially important for those counties who don't have a current tribe there. So trying to make it a personal point of contact. That's what all of this is about. This is about building relationships and uh, it's about people. So I'd like to have that component added in even in just presenting this tool to each council. Great. And Valerie, you have a question, comment? Yeah, um, thank you for this presentation. Um, I'm wondering if uh, I'm, I'm really interested in the history of Grant County when it comes to um, awareness of uh, and giving acknowledgement, like proper acknowledgement to the tribes in the surrounding area. So I'm wondering if you have any resources on where I can find that information so that I can um, gain that knowledge myself or um, yeah, just like any resources so that to start sort of this process, like what do people usually do? Right. So that's what will be on this toolkit. So I wish I could show you more, but the, so like the, the people page will have um, I mean, I have pages specific to each of the current 23 federally recognized tribes, but it's going to be presented based on county, um, or it, I'll have two presentations. You can either do alphabetical by tribe, or you can find your county and see which tribes um, you should start by looking at. So it's that's your first step, is learning who are the um, groups I should be learning about. Um, and then within each of those specific tribes, there's additional resources. It'll connect to their websites. It'll connect to census data specific to that tribe. Uh, it might have some economic indicator information or any sort of specific resources to that tribe, tribal nation will be on their page. And then the same thing on the history timeline, every piece, uh, every date that I put on there We'll have a snippet of information, but also a link to learn more. So this is all about presenting points for you to consider and then leading you to where you can learn more information. Thank you so much. <laughs> Other questions, comments? Okay, and if questions come up after the fact, I mean, 
you're going to be reading this yourself. So I hope more questions come up and suggestions. So I'm available. You can send your questions to Val or, or me directly, and we'll kind of incorporate that into the process. Geraldine. Yeah, I was just going to thank Alexis for all of her amazing work. <laughs> it's been so, it's been such a neat process to see her develop this. I mean, from the toolkit to the website, and she's so incredibly creative <laughs> and talented. So, um, but I, I was going to just kind of add to, um, I think this is also part of the work with the line acknowledgement, but um, I think, I think building this and thinking about this as, as a health council also brings awareness to, um, I mean, even you think about some, you know, the, the membership of your health council. And I think a lot of the times uh, we, we think from a county level and um, a lot of that, that means also not looking at tribes, pueblos and other nations, you know, tribal nations in our communities. And so it's very siloed work. Um, I know that there's some tribe tribes who are very open to the concept of working and collaborating. Um, maybe there's others who work more in silo, <laughs> but I, I think this 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 um, toolkit also encourages the um, partnership with tribal communities in the way that that we can just build relationships, and that's as simple as you know invitations, learning about their communities and cultures. I know Alexis is doing such amazing work with the research part of the toolkit. Um, and, but also, I think this also reminds us too to not rely so much on, um, you know, you know, information in, in the toolkit. But this this allows for the opportunity to go out and meet with tribal communities, their leaderships, extend invitations. I know there's like cultural preservation programs and departments in the tribes. I mean, there are um, healers, there are traditional, um, you know, storytellers. Um, you know, people who are open to sharing, you know, this information, some some stuff that you can't find online. And so I think the 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 premise of what I'm trying to say is to just build relationships and um, to build trust with tribes. And so, yeah, I definitely think this is a really good starting point. And um, I know county health councils are always asking, how do we establish rela those relationships? And um, I think this toolkit could really um, serve as, as a purpose in that. So I just wanted to add that little quick side note, but um, kudos to Alexis on all her amazing work. <laughs> and just to kind of tag onto that, um, you'll see as you, as you, you know, all the different tribes have their own, you know, resources available. Some of the websites, some don't have websites. Some don't have, uh, very, you know, they're not very descriptive. They may not have a, a lengthy history. So I tried to pull things together to give you a snapshot and then it really is about who can I reach out to? Um, I think coming from a place of uh, being humble and asking questions, um, not about how to do it or tell me what to do, but just learning. It's all about expanding our knowledge base and deepening our understanding. If there are tribes that you that are in your community that are not as open to partnerships, this process may give you an understanding about why, why that happened. What is it? It's not a personality thing. This is about uh, their experience in colonization. And so you understanding that background will help, uh, maybe that just that piece will help that tribe feel more comfortable in building a partnership just because they can see that you're coming from a place of respect and um, not representative of these sort of traitorous groups that they've interacted with. That makes sense. Two minutes left. Would someone like to make, have the final word? No? Okay, well, Alexis, thank you so much. Yeah. Frankly, I want to say that you and Geraldine together are an awesome team. Uh, health councils, I I depend on Geraldine. If I have any questions, if you have any questions about how to approach uh, one of our, our tribal communities, Geraldine is my go-to person, and now so is Alexis. So uh, remember, the Alliance is here for you to help you 
make the connections you need, build the capacity you need to really do the important work that you're charged with doing. So thank you all for coming. Um, we'll be back in touch with you with the with links to the recording and to information um, to follow up with. So stay in touch. And our next Health Council Talks is in two weeks. So we'll see you back then. Thank you all. Thank you, Alexis, again. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Sharon you. and Presbyterian. Bye. Have a good weekend. Uh-oh. <laughs>